Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 24th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Blotter. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The scriptures today focus on forgiveness and our need to forgive. It's part of who we are as Christians. But often we harbor grudges. We, we hold on to our wounds and we don't let them go. And so for today, we bring to mind those things which we are holding on to. Maybe the things which need to be healed, the things which need to be forgiven. We bring them to God. And we ask them for, for his healing and forgiveness. Lord God, you sent your Son to teach us how to love one another, and how to serve each other. Lord, have mercy. He came to bind up our wounds and to forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. He came that we might have a new and abundant life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. And now we give God glory. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Creator and ruler of all things, that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our hearts. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. Anger and wrath, these are abominations, and the sinful man will possess them. He that take, takes vengeance will suffer vengeance from the Lord, and he will firmly establish his sins. Forgive your neighbor the wrong he has done, and then your sins will be pardoned when you pray. Does a man harbor anger? against another, and yet seek for healing from the Lord? Does he have no mercy towards a man like himself, and yet pray for his own sins? If he himself, being flesh, maintains wrath, will he then seek forgiveness from God? Who will make expiation for his sins? Remember the end of your life, and cease from enmity. 
Remember destruction and death and be true to the commandments. Remember the commandments and do not be angry with your neighbor. Remember the covenant of the Most High and overlook ignorance. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The response, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and rich in mercy. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and rich in mercy. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all within me his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits. The Lord Lord is compassionate and and gracious, slow to anger and rich in mercy. If the Lord, who forgives all sins, who heals every one of your ills, who redeems your life from the grave, who crowns you with mercy and compassion, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and rich in mercy. He will not find fault nor persist in his anger forever. He does not treat us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our faults. The Lord Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow slow to to anger anger and rich in mercy. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong his mercy for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far from us does he remove our transgressions. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and rich in mercy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. A new commandment I give to you, says the Lord, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Peter came up and said to Jesus, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wishes to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the reckoning, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees imploring him, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But that same servant, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow servants, owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, 
Have patience with me and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison till he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed. and They went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? In his anger, his Lord delivered him to the jailers till he should pay all his debt. So also will thy heavenly Father do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In my homily today, I want to talk about three things. First, that forgiveness and reconciliation is intrinsic to who we are as Christians. It's part of our DNA. Second, we often think about forgiveness and reconciliation in individualistic terms, but that can lead us to ignore a very important communal dimension. We do this work as part of something, part of the community that we call church, part of the body of Christ. And thirdly, that when we engage in forgiveness and reconciliation, we are actually doing the work of justice, because ultimately justice, God's justice, is about bringing people into right relationship with God and with others. During the apartheid era, the security police, under the then minister Adrian Flock, attempted to poison the Reverend Frank Chikani the Secretary General of the South African Council of Churches. In 2006, long after his testimony before the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, Adrian Flock attempted to be reconciled with Frank Chikani. He showed up at his office in the union buildings and he asked if he could wash Frank's feet. Frank Chikani could have said no. He could have said that Adrian Flock deserved to rot in hell for what he had done, and not just to him, but to countless other people. He could have neglected this overture of peacemaking, but he didn't. And so Adrian ended up washing Frank's feet. I'm sure with many tears, and with much regret in his heart. And he did this without fanfare, without TV cameras or reporters. A Christian's mission in life is to help bring about peace and reconciliation. This is what the Reverend Frank Chikani did. Maybe Reverend Chikani remembered the words of Sirach, he said that we must forgive our neighbors in justice so that when we pray, our own sins will be forgiven. Maybe he remembered the insistence of Jesus that we have to forgive if we want to enjoy forgiveness ourselves. Maybe he remembered that from the very cross, Jesus asked his Father to forgive those who were killing him because they didn't know what they were doing. Maybe he remembered that in his own life there were wounds that needed healing and sins that needed forgiving. Jesus prefaces the parable that we hear today with the command, forgive your brother 70 times seven times. According to Jewish custom, 
Seven was the perfect number. So 70 times seven indicates infinity, an endless number. And he ends that parable with a, a command that mirrors the first. Forgive your brother on the heart. The calling, or the vocation, to forgive others and to be peacemakers is part of our Christian identity and is part of the mission that we, you and I, share with Christ, given to him by the Father. Christ didn't give this mission only to outstanding people like Frank Chicani. He gave that mission to us as well. And so we must also be people who promote peace and reconciliation in our own lives, in our community, in the world. In the very center of our liturgy, we place peace, forgiveness, and reconciliation. We pray the Lord's Prayer, asking for forgiveness and promising to forgive others. We exchange a sign of peace. But let me ask you this. What peace is it that we give each other? If as soon as we leave church, we continue to gossip and spread rumors about our friends and neighbors. What peace do we give each other when we leave and we go to judge and condemn others, dividing people from God and from one another? If this is the peace that we go to share with one another, then it is not God's peace. It's not God's mission. If this is truly the peace that we share with one another. We are showing that God's love has not fully entered our hearts. Now the mission of forgiveness, reconciliation, and peace building doesn't take place in a vacuum. We do it in our families and members of a family and a community. We are part of something bigger. I want you to note something important that happens in the parable which Jesus tells us today. It was the fellow servants of the two main characters who brought the hypocrisy and injustice of one of them the attention of their master, who then interceded to bring about justice. When we work to bring about forgiveness or, or healing or reconciliation, it is often the members of our community who bring both the hurt and the injustice to light and then help to bring healing and resolution. And our own history the Truth and Reconciliation Commission was so effective because it enabled persecutors and their victim survivors to come face to face with each other within a communal context which gave support and enabled the truth to emerge for families to find closure and with God's grace come to a place of healing, forgiveness, and reconciliation. As part of a community, part of this body, there are many ways in which we can corporately bring about change. Internationally, we've seen visuals of Black Lives Matter protests. And the amazing thing is that these crowds are incredibly diverse. They bring together young and old, rich and poor, black and white, and every color in between. Here in South Africa, there's been community-based organizations that have helped government to account uh, in the matter of corruption. We are more effective in our mission, whatever that might be, if we stand together with others. You probably realize by now, from the examples that I've used, 
that the ultimate goal or purpose of forgiveness, healing, and reconciliation is to bring about a change in the relationship between individuals and groups, and ultimately between us and God. The proof that we have done the work of forgiveness, that afterwards we are different. Others are different. Our society is different. We begin to relate to each other differently, more compassionately, more lovingly. We begin to see each other for what we truly are, brothers and sisters, friends in the Lord. And because of this change of perspective, we start to share our plenty with those who do not have. We begin to speak up for those who have no power, the voiceless and the marginalized in our society. We champion justice because to act justly means to be in right relationship with others. The master in the parable gets angry because the servant is unable to share the gift of forgiveness which he had received so abundantly. So maybe there are wounds which you have received that you found difficult or impossible to forgive. Maybe there are some wounds that you will never be able to forgive in this world. The Lord does not demand perfection, simply that we try even if we fail time and time again. And that's because we cannot be credible witnesses of God's love, healing, and reconciliation. If we do not try, however imperfectly, to live these values in our own lives. We now stand and we uh, profess our faith. We shall be using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty creator, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was and crucified, died, and was buried. He descended, descended into heaven. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now with faith in God's love, and His healing and forgiveness, we bring to Him the prayers of our own wounded world. We pray for the grace of forgiveness in our lives and for the healing and freedom which it brings. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the many communities of which we are part of, not just here in South Africa, but around the world. May we be agents of reconciliation and instruments of peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that the peace of God may also be accompanied by God's justice, that all people may live in right relationship with God and with one another. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, that those who are sick will recover, that those who have died will be welcomed into God's kingdom, and that those who mourn will be comforted. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for a moment in silence for our own needs.
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty God, hear our prayers today. Those that we speak out loud, and those that we pray in our hearts. For we ask them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit to the earth and work of human hands, that become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. The name of the sword and wine, that we come to share in the divinity of Christ, and brought himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, to the vine and work of human hands, that will become for us our spiritual drink. This will be God forever. Lord God, be pleased with these gifts we offer you, humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Almighty God, look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all that you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided, by dissension and discord. Yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your Spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and peoples seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when he was about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, 
he took bread into his hands. And then, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. On that same evening, he took the cup of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy. And then he gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have given us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation, Holy Father, we humbly pray that you accept us together with your Son. And in this saving banquet, fill us with the Spirit, the Spirit that takes away everything that separates us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, with Butti and Duncan, our bishops, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you've gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, our husband, with the apostles and the martyrs, and with all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who've died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them in the unending banquet of unity, in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Jesus Christ our Lord, for it is through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, keep us always free from sin and safe, from all needless anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not in our sin, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, 
You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. And so, my brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy really that you should enter my room, but but only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Jesus Christ bring eternal life. Let us receive it in faith. <laughs> Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the working of this heavenly gift take possession of our minds and our bodies that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to give God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God.